I'm not doing it. Huh? I am not reviewing Far Cry 6. Uh, okay. I know you want me to. No, I... I don't. Yeah, you do. Whether or not you review Far Cry 6 is of no concern to me whatsoever. God, your desperation is just... palpable. You see, Ubisoft, I'm not here to review Far Cry 6. I'm here to do something far more important. I'm here to speak your language. I'm not here to tell you that your weirdly enthusiastic and single-minded pursuit of mediocrity is bad. Oh. Yes, I'm here to tell you that it's bad business. And will one day cost you an insane amount of money. But do, do, my, my money? That's right. But I'm going to have to do something that hurts first. I've got rules about making YouTube videos. And I'm about to break my biggest one. And that rule is... Shut. The. Fuck. Up. Shut up. Shut up about the fucking algorithm, and demonetization, and engagement, and watch time, and no, enough. When you watch a TV show, they don't open it up with various metrics discussing the viability of their show and its format and the changing landscape of entertainment. No, they play the fucking show because no one cares. They also don't tell you to leave a positive review on fucking Metacritic either, so they can pump their numbers up. It is so stupid. I hate it so much. How about instead of telling me to smash that like button, you make something I like, you fucking hack. Your job is to entertain me. How about you do that before I click on any number of the myriad of objects you're trying to tell me to click for some fucking reason. But here we go. Here we go. Let's talk about the algorithm. There are many wildly successful YouTubers, but there are many more formerly wildly successful YouTubers. The game of YouTube is to create clickable video titles and thumbnails which drive engagement and cover whatever topic is in vogue at the time of upload. Now unfortunately for me, I don't know what's in vogue. Uh, people have been sharing this with me a lot. I don't know what this is, uh, but I'm guessing if you made a video about this, it would be quite successful. The algorithm favors certain videos, but it doesn't always favor the exact same kind of video. Sometimes it favors longer videos. Sometimes it favors shorter videos. Sometimes it favors nightmares. Remember Toys in Japan? They were a channel which produced Finger Family videos, which for reasons I do not understand, hack children's brains. Toddlers left alone on the family iPad would watch these videos endlessly. These videos were cheaply and quickly produced nightmares, which each fingered, featured, featured, the same nursery rhyme and involved 3D models dancing around, usually 3D models of some popular character. You know, characters like Spider-Man, uh, Elsa from Frozen, uh, Hitler. Butterfinger, butterfinger, where are you? I is dead. God, we mean dead. Any word the algorithm could latch onto and would push, it, d it did not matter. Hitler, I mean, oh, he's so hot right now. But the thing is, you have to remember, there really are still people within this algorithmically optimized system. People who are kind of increasingly forced to act out these increasingly bizarre combinations of words, like a kind of a desperate improvisation artist responding to the kind of combined screams of a million toddlers at once. Right? Uh, there are real people trapped within these systems, and that's the other deeply strange thing about this algorithmically driven culture, is even if you're human, you have to end up behaving like a machine just to survive. Obviously, the thing about YouTube which makes it sort of awful is that you don't need to make good videos. Is this what you wanted? Hell, you can make nearly unwatchable videos and still be massively successful. Hey, it's prank time, baby! <laughs> If you guys are watching this, I just want to say a quick shout out to my boy Chris, who is actually in the army. Uh, sir, this is an airman in the U.S. Air Force, not a soldier in the army. Do not misgender him. You can make bad videos exclusively to play into the algorithm, playing YouTube like a game in which you exploit the meta so you can win. You don't win by actually being better, you win by playing the algorithm. And you will win for a bit. Your success is a result of circumstances outside of your control. The algorithm changes and your success is the algorithm. You could have used your time to get better, to hone your craft, 
to get to the heart of what it is that you want to make and people want to watch, but you didn't. You didn't learn to make good videos that people like to watch. You learned to make videos an equation liked to push. Your pursuit of short-term success has robbed you of long-term success. You acted as if you'd won, as if you'd found an infinite money glitch in real life, and you were gonna ride this digital dragon to Valhalla, but what you did not understand, what you failed to grasp is, what in the goddamn fuck are you on about? I told you I was not gonna review Far Cry 6. Okay, I, I do not care, but why are you talking about Dancing Hitler videos? Well, you make them. I do not. Hmm, no? You do not? No. Hmm. I can tell you're leading me into some aha, I gotcha type shit, but uh, honestly, I think you just forgot to take your meds again. I did not forget to take my meds. I intentionally chose not to because the government is trying to turn me gay with chemicals. There's a difference. <sighs> you know you can't win game development, right? That your exploiting of current trends makes you utterly dependent on them for success? What? Do you know the difference between an infinite game and a finite game? I know what an infinite conversation feels like. A finite game is something like, well, football. The goal is to win. You score more points than the other team, and then, well, it's over. Congratulations. An infinite game is something we usually don't even call a game, even if it is one in practice. Running a business is an infinite game. You don't win in business, but there are rules, competitors, methods of measuring success, and yes, milestones on the path to success. It's a game, but no one's ever gonna blow the whistle and say, All right, boys, capitalism has ended. I guess Twitter got something right for once. So let's tally up the score, see who got the biggest market cap, and gets to go home with the Chili's gift card. Sure, you may have a bigger market share or beat quarterly earnings expectations, but the goal of running a business is not to win. A game which does not end is also a game which cannot be won. The goal of running a business is to continue to improve and expand and offer better products or services year after year. To keep playing, you have to get better. And the moment you stop getting better, you've already lost. Blockbuster had a chance to buy Netflix, and they didn't. Because Blockbuster thought they had won the game of home video distribution, so they stopped playing. They didn't see Netflix as the future. The future was Blockbuster, obviously! If you're playing an infinite game with a finite mindset, as Blockbuster did, you're gonna lose, and you're gonna lose badly, because everyone behind you is still playing and they're coming for you. Many executives run businesses with this mindset, and there is always, without fail, a point in time where they get bent over a barrel and get absolutely f Steve, let me ask you about uh, the iPhone and the Zune, if, if I may. The Zune uh, was getting some traction, then Steve Jobs goes to Macworld, and he, he pulls out this iPhone. What was your first reaction when you saw that? $500 fully subsidized with a plan? I said, that is the most expensive phone in the world, and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard, which makes it not a very good email machine. Now, with hindsight, are there things I'd do differently? Of course. Like what? Come on, Charlie. I probably would have started us doing hardware earlier so that really? we could have been yeah. more effective in the phone business. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of like an IQ test. Should Microsoft have a position in the phone business? Yes. Uh, the two most profitable companies. We were the number one most profitable company in our business for a long time. Right. Two guys have passed us, and they both did it by making phones, Apple and Samsung. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't think the software was the right play there, but yeah. the two most profitable companies now in our business are Apple, Samsung, Microsoft. Right. For years, it was Microsoft and some other guys. Yeah. So, do I wish we had done that sooner? Of course I do. Then why didn't you? When the name of your company is Microsoft and your formula works, yeah. our formula was working. Businesses run with a finite mindset don't look to the future. They stand on their past. Their goal is to maintain the status quo because the status quo is rewarding them at that very moment. 
They ignore the fact that the status quo is an impermanent thing, whereas businesses run with an infinite mindset are something to be feared. These are businesses which are not concerned with winning because they understand you cannot win, you can only play better. You're not here for this. You're not here for corporate motivational speech, where I get paid to talk about innovation and infinite mindsets on stage like I'm some big shot, despite the fact that I'm going to the nearby Applebee's afterwards so I can sexually harass the waitresses there. No, no, you're gamers. So how does this apply to the gaming industry? Valve. Valve doesn't make games anymore, except for Half-Life Alex, which is fucking amazing. You'll have to try it after you sell a kidney. But Valve doesn't just exploit the current meta. They're not a business that makes nothing but money. Well, the loot boxes are... Give me a minute! I have done nothing wrong, ever, in my life. I know this. And I love you. Money, please! Valve fucks up. Sort of a lot, because that's the game. You fuck around, you experiment, you push boundaries and set standards, and sometimes you release steam machines. That's the game. Valve understands that they have not won, because you cannot win. When Valve first conceived of the seemingly perpetual money machine that is Steam, they didn't want to build it. They just wanted to stop using publishers because they're fucking awful middlemen. Valve went to various Silicon Valley companies, asking them to build Steam for them, and the companies refused. Why? Because these companies were Yahoo, Microsoft, and whatever the fuck Real Networks is. Now what do these three companies have in common? That's right, being fucking dumpster fires with absolutely zero vision or desire to innovate, Valve recognized that part of the system sucked, and they got rid of it, while everyone else was just accepting the system as it is. They could not foresee anything changing the system, even if that's what happens. It happens every time. Nothing is the same forever. Valve is not a massively successful company in spite of their failures. They're massively successful because they're willing to fail. If you're not failing, that doesn't mean that you're really good at the game. If you're not failing, that means you're not playing the game anymore, and your days are numbered. There's a meta in the games industry. Open world, crafting collectibles, live service, and microtransaction riddled games which are made by grinding your employees into the dirt. I'm not here to tell you that this is an unethical way to run a business, because you already know that. I'm here to tell you it's an outright bad way to run a business, and it does not work forever. You cannot win game development. There is no end. Yeah. I'm sick of it, Microsoft. I'm sick of it. You hear me? No more Halo games. Listen, Bungie, let's, let's not get hysterical here. Think of all that we've built. The legions of fans who love your work. And the, the money. My god, man. Won't you think of the money? I was never in it for the money. Okay, well, now you're just lying. You have two options. Let us make something else, or we walk. Yeah, walk. Hmm, what? Walk, bitch. Get to steppin'. You wanna be free? You wanna go back out into that big, wide world that chewed you up and spit you out just seven years ago? Be my guest. Just make two more Halo games first. I wanna do something different. It's... my destiny. That's gay, but, uh, okay. We get to keep Halo, and you get to hit the bricks and make your gay nonsense. Now, Microsoft was, particularly under Steve Ballmer, smooth-brained as fuck, as I'm sure you've already gathered. They took this deal, seeing it as an obvious win for them. Bungie left Microsoft with their aging shooter franchise and went on to make Destiny, which is now the second best-selling shooter franchise of all time. And Halo's been in a perpetual state of, oh, maybe this new one will be good again, since Bungie left. I don't like Destiny, but it is a sterling example of the benefits of looking to the future instead of the past, of listening to your employees and not standing between them and their job, which you hired them to do. No formula wins forever, save for the formula of offering a great product. Or whatever the fuck Destiny was. You cannot win in game development, but you can lose. You lose when you get so laser-focused on creating a successful formula, then never deviate from or improve upon it. 
a formula which rides current trends and will cease to work the moment those trends deviate or just disappear because they do. They always do. When I look at Ubisoft or EA or Activision, I do not see companies which have won for all the wrong reasons. I see companies which do not understand that you cannot win. You can only play. Cope harder, kid. Absolute baboon mentality. I'm staying winning and you're staying losing. You're just jealous that your videos aren't as popular as those Hitler Finger Family videos, which, quite frankly, are excellent. How are they excellent? They made money. Ubisoft, you think you've min-maxed game development. Your THQ and Acclaim making endless licensed movie tie-in games. Your Midway and their inability to make anything outside of an arcade cabinet. Your Atari flooding the market with cheap trash. To such a sickening degree, they caused the collapse of the entire industry. This story has been told before, and unlike the infinite game of game development, this story does have an end. It ends with a company looking up from its creatively bankrupt and joyless assembly line and realizing your customers are gone because you didn't bring them joy. And that was the game the whole time. Uh-huh. I suppose there's no convincing you. It's not that what you're doing is unethical or creatively bankrupt, it's that what you're doing is running a bad business with an expiration date. By the time you realize your formula doesn't work anymore, you will have 10 games with that formula deep in development. It'll be too late to change by then. You have time and money, Ubisoft. Time to explore uncharted territories, money to explore bold ideas, you have all the tools you need to build the future. So why do you keep building the past? Cope harder. Can I leave you with a quote from the book which introduced this concept of finite versus infinite games to me? You can leave me with whatever the fuck you want. I just want you to leave. During employee town hall meetings at GE, some of the employees would express concern that the company was too focused on the short term. Jack Welch, then CEO, was fond of replying, Long term is just a series of short terms. When employees express such a concern to a CEO, more likely than not, what they're really asking is, what's this all for? What is all our hard work contributing to beyond the metrics and material rewards? Welch's answer revealed that to him, there was no higher cause at play. The goal was simply to perform, perform again, and perform again. Oh, whatever you fuck. Oh. Yeah, oh yeah, he, uh, he said he was, he was leaving. Well, I'm glad he's gone. Cramping my style. Coping all over my perfectly good alley.